Hello everybody and welcome to a Gillinor Games Season 3 Episode 4 review video for me, Be the Victim. Um, just a heads up, massive spoilers for what's gone on in the season so far, so if you haven't seen the videos and want to, which you should, go watch them. And I uh, will leave a link to the playlist, I guess, so you can see all the episodes in the description of this video. Although chances are if you're watching this video, you've probably already seen the show. But anyway, I've been loving these review videos that Solo Mission and Bodhi have been putting out, and I really wanted to follow suit because I think that my perspective will be interesting to go alongside theirs. I mean, Solo's got like a very political mind. He's getting involved in all these snaky things, and then Bodhi's a lot more like challenge focused, you know, because he's not into the politics side of the th side of things. I'm sort of in between the two of them, and. I don't know, as a relatively solo player with a different perspective from Solo Mission, I think hopefully I can provide some fun insight into the competition. So just a really quick intro. I subbed in for Tanzu in episode two because of scheduling conflicts, although Stefan said something about a toe injury, which a lot of very smart people thought was actually the real reason, and I uh, ended up fully replacing him in episode three because he still couldn't make a lot of the times. Um, this is kind of cool because I couldn't have been eliminated in the first episode, or really the second, because I don't think people wanted to vote for Tanzu when he wasn't there and have me lose on his behalf. Um, but it also has the really big negative effect of me having no idea where I stand in the games. I think that I would rather, I mean, uh, you know, I haven't been making content, so I didn't expect an invite in any way, shape, or form, and was just super happy to be on the show. But I definitely would have rather been in earlier to get a feel for the competition rather than jumping in later and having, you know, a lot less of an idea of where everyone's head's at and who's allied with who and that sort of thing. Um, the general strategy I brought into the game was just to lay low and downplay myself. You know, I'm washed. I haven't played the game since Trailblazer League. I was never really good, um, which is true about some things. And probably not so much about others but i basically want to just remind everyone how bad i am at the game now i'm totally washed i haven't made content in a long time i haven't even logged in in like over a year at the first filming point um so that was the goal you know i'll be the victim not a threat just a random came in filled whatever and then strategy wise basically i think that the most power in this season lies between alliances so like you have all this craziness you have all these big alliances that you know have all the voting power but really the best place to be in my opinion and this is what i was thinking going in is between them because you know to the to each alliance the biggest threat is going to be the other alliance and if you can play the alliances off of each other pretty consistently then you may be able to whittle both sides down while keeping yourself safe because as a solo player you're not a big threat um another thing that throws a wrench into this is the double voting that soup added for getting good placement in a challenge so i'm in a spot where i think i'm a really solid player but i'm not really the best in almost any area so normally that would just put me like middle of the pack i do well in challenges but not win any i don't lose any you know, like, okay, whatever. But in this season, it puts me usually at the upper end of the pack. And that means that more often than not, I'll probably have two votes, which is huge. That just makes my power as the swing vote guy even bigger. And it like just falls exactly in line with the way that I see the game. Um, and also, I think that, you know, worst case, if I'm feeling really threatened, I can go to the heads of the alliances and I can say, hey, look, I have two votes almost every week, or well, okay, maybe not almost every week. I ain't that good, but you know, I I have two two votes potentially a lot of the weeks. If I'm voting with you, the other alliance, you can just exterminate them, and if I'm voting against you, you risk the same thing happening to you. So I feel like it's a really like understated way to have power, but it's a huge amount of power because being the swing vote is everything about getting people put into the bannings when the alliances are about even. I feel like I'm like, <laughs> I'm not like solo, so I don't feel too bad, but there's like that, uh, yeah, it's, it's, okay, shit, ignore me, I'm just making a dumb pop culture reference that half people probably won't get, but basically I, I feel like a crazy person explaining all this, but 
having watched solo mission i can't be nearly as insane as he is so we're all good um anyway uh i haven't made another recap video so just real quick in episode two when i subbed in i had a double vote i was on a team with almost i was on a team with three people from the framed na alliance so basically they were like yo you should vote with us i'm friends with them like from previously so i was like ah, yeah screw it i'll just vote with you guys and it turned out that that actually was a huge deal Ditter grabbed the two votes from me and then ended up going into the banning and being eliminated. So huge impact already, which kind of got that two votes being the most powerful thing in the game that you can do um, idea in my head, you know? And then in episode three, there's a Castle Wars one. I just threw away my vote. Um, I didn't really have any idea what was going on politically at all, and I didn't really want to target on my back for voting for anyone, so I just was like, ah, screw it, I'll vote for Vertoso. I figured he wasn't getting any votes, I was right, so just a useless vote, which in retrospect didn't matter at all. I, you know, I had no power. Um, and then here we are, episode four. So we get started, we do the party room thing, uh, and I get paired with It's Will. Good friend, very good player. And to my knowledge, he's neutral. So again, here I've just had this uh, chart up for a little while. Um, this is the way that I saw the game during this episode. So, you know, I go in, I'm with another neutral person. To me, in my head, this is perfect. You know, we have no ties to anyone. We have no enemies. There's like zero chance that we should be getting voted in as long as we don't lose the challenge. So, you know, money-making challenge gets announced. Uh, region locked and will i don't think had any real strong opinions on where to go um you know chinchampas were banned gauntlet was banned a lot of the good methods from scratch were banned and so i and i also had no idea about revenants i did not know because i hadn't played in so long it had been like probably about two years maybe even more since i'd played the main game um and so I had no clue that Revenants were really, really good. And again, there wasn't a 100k payment required for people that had already unlocked it, I guess. And so people could go straight in, and that's what made it as good as it was, was like you could just get decent gear, jump straight into the rough caves, make bank. I don't think neither Will nor I really knew that existed, so we didn't go with it. Also, I do think like I'm pretty risk averse and I wanted to make sure we didn't lose because that would be a big issue if we didn't have votes and had two automatically on us. So we just went with something safe. I threw out looting Necreal because I knew it's not bad. I was just thinking of when I trained Slayer and a bunch of people stole all my shit and I was like, dang, <laughs> like this is really, this must be pretty good money because this guy's getting like 500k an hour off me. Um, so it was down and we went over to Karen to do that. And fortunately, we were also the only people that chose it. So we didn't have to worry about like running into other competitors, ruining our method. Um, as far as the challenge itself, like, I don't think there's too much to say. Uh, you guys saw it, you know, solo mission and EV escape take the win easily by dominating revs. Will and I get third with the double votes, which again, really big. Um, and I guess just a couple of Easter eggs. So I mentioned... I got a confessional in the episode about how I ran into like Iron Men that were the dregs of society. He couldn't put it in the episode, of course. It would have been terrible. But like, I log into a world, there's two Iron Men, and the first thing I see within seconds is some guy says something like, Go stick another needle into your arm, you sheep. And I just was like, Oh no, here we go. And it just immediately devolves into like a full flame on anti vax versus vax discussion for COVID. And <laughs> like, oh man, I mean, any clip from within that like minute and a half span that I was there waiting to see if their drops would pop up was just completely unusable for soup. I have like, oh, they're, it was so bad. They're just both absolute degenerates. Um, so yeah, that didn't make the episode. Just a little mention of it, not specifically. And then another thing that came up later that I just thought was hilarious was this where oh shit that's not the right window my bad um was this <laughs> where jimmy i think in his own discord um went and added and was like does anyone have an account with 99 thieving on it because we didn't know what they did after the challenge and he was like yeah they must have gone to buyers which was right but i just thought that was hilarious that jimmy was trying to source an account with better thieving <laughs> so he could like do the method and not have it be super shit um just a fun little thing to throw in there 
anyway end of the challenge we get third place which in my head is like perfect you know good enough to get two votes and i still felt super safe because will and i aren't affiliated with anyone you know we're right in the middle of these alliances we figure surely the Eevee and torvesta alliance is gonna go for the framed na alliance um and then i get an interesting dm from my brother kevin who asks if i'm voting with them for their alliance and you know i didn't really know what was going on so i wasn't sure my first instinct is i need to know who's in the alliance i need to figure out if my impression about what's going on here is right so i know where my votes should go to keep the alliances even because that's my ultimate goal is both sides should be even so i can manipulate who goes home every week by being the swing vote um so you know he's he's a little cagey he won't tell me exactly who they have but he says they have six people which is interesting because in my head they had guaranteed four i was thinking they had skill specs because of the voting previous week um and how confused he was when the result came in and um i didn't know where solo mission was at but basically i said i'm i'm in but you have to tell me who it is and framed you know he's a good guy he's an honest man as he himself would say so uh so he agrees and he tells me the core four which i i mean i knew this guaranteed settled jimmy eight sat framed very good friends play games together all the time like you know i mean i'm i'd say i'm decent friends with most or all of them you know because we've just played games before too especially uh settled and framed and um good good guys good friends and then he includes some very important information for me that skill specs and solo mission are he says question marks but they're they says they've been voting with them skill specs i strongly suspected was the case but solo mission was very interesting to me because you know i'm a huge gg fan i watch both the other seasons i know about all the solo the snake crap so i'm like huh okay solo mission and um let's see let me find this one so the previous week solo mission he did this to everyone but he said yo just seeing if i can message like smiley face what's up and uh you know i just told him my dms are always open and what basically all we did here was downplay ourselves to each other and he says i have no allies so you know next week right after the i have no allies declaration from solo mission suddenly he's in the framed na alliance so interesting you know just a little tidbit of information to take note of um and then you know we're we're in pre-voting i'm talking to will who is my partner we weren't in the channel together anymore so i was like you know does anyone hate you do you think that there's like a reason for us to get voted in he mentions solo mission wants me gone because he knows i'm a threat which like you know in my head it's like okay that's not i mean not to be disparaging of will but like there are a lot of threats in the games you know like will's scary bodie's scary solo mission scary ev scary. you know like there are a lot of settled there are a lot of good players i mean really i could name almost everyone in the games there are a lot of really good players so that doesn't really bother me at all and i'm just again trying to trying to sneak some info out of whoever i can just squeeze a little bit of alliance information if i can get it because, you know, Will's not mentioned in this alliance, so I figure, oh, maybe Will is in the other alliance on this side. Um, and he's like, nah, I have no idea. And I, I know pretty, I know Will pretty well. I believe him. So I think, like, okay, Will's not with anyone. We're pretty safe. Um, and then we get put in. So we voted for... So successfully voted with the Framed NA Alliance and got Hanani and Sinferna in, which is really big because if you look if these two get eliminated we have five or so people here and we have five or so people here and i didn't know foe was on this side either um so and i don't trust solo mission so basically i have five guaranteed people in this alliance that i think are safe and five on this one if sinferna and hanani go home um so the vote you know went like perfectly in my head uh then let's see so we get put in and framed gives me a piece of information that is insanely important which is that he tells me solo mission didn't know that i was voting with them which is 
like it doesn't sound like a lot and he's like oh, okay don't worry he didn't snake you that hard or anything but that tells me a couple of things one it tells me that there's no like group chat there's no main source of information for this six-man alliance if there were then Kevin definitely would have said something about how I was voting with them and I was helping them be the swing vote for Sinferna Hanani. So I know that Framed and that this here connection between Mr. Framed and Mr. Solo Mission is not very good. And and that's something that I was already suspicious of just because I'm like naturally suspicious of Solo Mission, just knowing how well he plays the game and manipulates people. The other thing it tells me is that Kevin doesn't, really have my back so i agreed to vote with their alliance which to me means join the alliance but kevin not telling solo mission not to put me in tells me he was only worried about himself and maybe these other guys going in and he was not worried at all about me going in didn't care i mean like we're friends outside the game i'm not i'm not mad about it you know i i sound mad i swear i'm not um he's just playing the game but uh but it tells me he doesn't have my back so I know that if I do join this alliance, no matter how well I do on their side, no matter how much I help them, I am always going to be at the bottom of the pecking order. If this alliance wins, if they start seriously eliminating a lot of people from this side and they need a fall guy, they need someone to start going after when there's six or seven people left, it's not going to be it's not going to be one of these fellers. It's not going to be the guys that are great friends that started this alliance from the beginning. It's going to be the guy at the bottom of the totem pole who's not getting protected already in episode four when we've got a ton of episodes to go, potentially. And so, again, I feel like I learned something very, very important from here. And I, we were so we don't know what the banning is yet, Will and I versus uh, Sinferna and Hanani, but honestly, we're super confident. Like, I'm talking to Will, and I was just, like, confident. He's like, hell yeah, baby, we got this. Um... I really, I can't think of any challenge at all where I don't think Will and I would beat Sinferna and Hanani. And I, I'm like, I really mean no disrespect, but Hanani in particular, you know, is like very entertaining, but not that big into actually engaging in a lot of the harder content in the game. I don't think she's made like a bunch of Iron Men or anything. So as far as like, like game knowledge, we have way more. PvP skill, way more. PvM skill, Sinferna is better than I am, but I think Will and she and Will are probably about on the same level, and I think that I'm a lot better than Hanani. So really, like, unless it's pure RNG on the challenge, which is super rare, I figure we've got it. And and Will's in the same boat. We were really confident, we stayed calm, cool, collected, all that good stuff, and we win the banning. I mean, going in, we had so much more money, which I think Soup even kind of hinted at this would be this being the challenge during the money making challenge or before it. But uh, we had so much more money that we were just massively over prepared. Like we realized they weren't going to be able to bring mage. We had myth seeds even. We brought like myth seeds. We had sand fuse. Uh, we had like a couple of other. We had stamina's ready, and we just decided not to bring any of them because we figured let's just bring anglers. We'll have more food. We'll be safe, easy. Um, and it was. I mean. Credit to Sinferna and Nanny, the, the energy strat was good. Um, we knew that they were too poor to use a decent number of myth bolts, so we figured that they didn't have them, which is why we banked our sand fuse, um, which doesn't make any sense. I think that was just like by accident. Like Obviously, you could just bring one instead of a restore, but I saw in the video we didn't have them, and I thought we did, so I guess we just screwed up and banked them. Um, but anyway, yeah, we, we win the banning. We get immunity for next week. Huge. Um, and... This is like a best case scenario. I, I'm using like tier maker or whatever, which is kind of dog for this. I'm not, I don't have the high tech solo mission stuff going on. So I'll just like stick them underneath my, there you go. Okay, so they're gone. And now we are left with this being the situation in my head. Um, also, I get a message from none other than Mr. Solo Mission saying, I had to vote for someone. It is what it is, good stuff. You know, and really to me, this message means literally nothing. Like, he's trying to smooth things over, which, like, yeah, I mean, I, I can't take anything he says at face value. So to me, he's just trying to, like, placate me. And that doesn't tell me at all that he's like, oh, hey, you're in our alliance, we'll protect you. No, nah, means nothing. Um, 
and then Kevin. So it took Solo and Evie like 20 minutes, probably 15 or 20 minutes or something crazy to decide who they wanted to throw in. Like they were actually in that call. Maybe I'm exaggerating, but they were in that call for so, so long. And so uh, in my head, like what can they be discussing other than an alliance with each other? Like there is no way that they're arguing just back and forth, hitting a brick wall into each other the entire time about like who to send in. Evie's like, oh, we're sending in frame. And he's like, no, we're sending Torvesta. Like they're, they're not going to spend 15 or 20 minutes discussing that. So in my head, there's a really good chance that instead of over here, Mr. Solo mission is more like somewhere over here. So I go to my good buddy framed and say, that Jake Upton and uh, and Joel here had a real long conversation. Just you know, keep it, keep your eyes open. And Kevin again says he's the reason I'm not in there. He stopped Evie from sending me in. Which to call back that last message I showed here again tells me Kevin cares about saving his own skin and really does not give a fuck about saving me at all. Um, so I know where I stand with this alliance and I don't feel bad about my plan to whittle down either side because I know that they don't have my back. And I mean, granted, I probably shouldn't feel bad anyway. It's the Gilinor games. You do what you got to do. But, uh, but all the same, like I know that my loyalty should not lie on this side. So I keep that in mind going forward. Um, yeah, so end, end of the episode, Will and I win the banning. We're immune for next week. Um, I really don't trust Solo Mission, and I mean, I can kind of trust this alliance. I know that they're not going to go for me immediately, which is what I want. Um, and then I did also start to suspect Paul here. I wasn't sure, but I noticed that six votes got cast on Kevin and 8sap. And for that to happen without any of these people having a double vote, someone else had to be voting with them because uh, Sin Sinfern and Hanani didn't get votes. So in my head, someone else did. I know Bodhi's apolitical. He just plays the game like that. He's all about like winning by merit alone and all that, like, which is good stuff, but you know, it's the Gilinor games. If, if you're not snaking people, you're not using all the tools uh, available. Um, so Paul's kind of over here for me. I'm not sure, but I know that they got some vote from somewhere, um, which again, this is like the ideal situation for me at the end of this episode. I'm so happy with this because if solo missions here and foes here and these two are like, they literally just are voting for whoever. I didn't know for sure, but Bodhi voted for us. He was the only person to do so. That's where his double vote went. And then Will voted for, I don't know, like Vert Vertoso or some, I, I don't know. Like, I don't even know who Will voted for. It was just some random ass person team. Um, so these two aren't voting with the swings. So it's six V six and I'm sitting here right where I want to be in the middle. I am the potential swing vote. I'm, I, you know, I haven't had any communication with this alliance, so I'm planning to stick with this one for next week. Um, if we can get one person from here out, that'll switch my focus and I'll want to be sliding over here to get another one of them out. But, uh, you know, that's, there's a lot that can change with the challenge, you know, like depending on who wins and who's immune, the double votes, all that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm incredibly happy with this episode. Will and I got a banning that we could win comfortably and did. No real pressure even because of the money from the challenge being used and us having such a big advantage there. Um, great first episode. I've got now, I started this episode with almost no knowledge of any Alliance stuff at all. Like... I was really, really lost and just trying to gather information. And I end it with this in my head right now, which as far as I'm aware after the fact was actually incredibly accurate. So I start again, I start episode four, like I have no clue what's going on. I'm just gonna like put my head down see what I can learn. And I learn almost perfectly the layout of the entire game, um, which is huge. So I'm potentially the swing vote next week. Stefan mentioned bossing. He said the word boss when he was talking about like, see you next week, something like, we'll see who's a boss or whatever. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, so it's probably a PBM challenge, which I'm pretty confident in. I think I'm like, I don't know, top 
five or six players in PVM in the competition, even though I'm kind of washed. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the next episode. And also the next episode of all these reviews that uh, that people are starting to do. And I hope that if more contestants see these, they, uh, they get out here and do some of their own. Because this stuff is m- almost as entertaining for me as the actual episodes. Um, but anyway, yeah, there should be an episode coming out, I think, next Saturday, the one right before Christmas. Looking forward to watching that and seeing everyone's reactions. And I won't be around until after New Year's. So if I do an episode five review, it'll be after New Year's. But Soup is taking a break, so I won't miss a GG episode. So I'll just do it like in, in the weeks in between where he's taking a one week break. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, everybody. You know, if you want to see more of these, let me know. If no one watches it and it's terrible, then that's fine too. I just won't make any more. But I did enjoy talking it all out, and it's super fun thinking about all the madness and alliances and snaking and challenges that went on. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Happy holidays to everyone. Hope you enjoy the next episode of GG, and I will most likely see you very soon.